This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome to the channel. This video is on elastic rebound theory. This is part of the earthquakes and seismology playlist and we're looking at this theory that really understands and explains how earthquakes work, how earthquakes are created and gives us a chance or a probability to look at rocks to try and predict future earthquakes in certain areas of the world. So the elastic rebound theory is the all-encompassing idea and understand of how an earthquake works. So definition is the elastic energy built up in rocks is suddenly released creating earthquakes and the reorganization of the crustal rocks before, during and after the earthquake. So what does this mean? So it means that we're looking at plate tectonics as an overarching, all-encompassing topic. Now this was formulated and agreed upon in 1960s and 1970s. So this elastic rebound theory actually came way before plate tectonics, but we now can combine the two to see how they work and function as a system. But we understand that the crustal rocks have stress, which is the force applied to an area. Now this stress comes from the plate tectonics, the plate movement, the organization of the plates, the convection currents, and the, the strength levels and different compositions of the crustal rock and how it deals with stress in certain directions and vectors. So the stress is kind of contained and built up inside the rock. So if I just draw a nice little simple rock here, we'll just add some stress, some force, or in basic terms, some energy into this rock, and it's like a, a big battery. It's gonna store this energy up, and it's gonna increase. The energy is gonna keep on increasing, and the rock becomes increasingly full of energy. This will cause deformation and strain, and then what's gonna happen eventually, it's gonna happen is there's gonna be a fracture and a displacement, and we're gonna get the earthquake because the energy that's stored in the rock is going to be released suddenly in the form of seismic waves. Now this elastic rebound theory is a basic theory just to explain how this happens. So in 1906, in the great state of California, the San Andreas Fault Line, the northern section around the San Francisco Bay, there was a very large earthquake measuring 7.9 on the Richter scale. This hit the city of San Francisco. Now, it was a terrifying, basically one minute event, which completely changed both the city in terms of the damage, destruction, and death toll, but also the science and understanding of earthquakes. So it's an unfortunate situation where these massive natural disasters occur, but it's also a chance for the scientists that are both near the area and able to study these events to gather and obtain information and scientific data to greatly expand the knowledge of earthquakes and how they form, how they function, how they operate. Just like with Mount St. Helens in 1980 with volcanoes and volcanology, it's the ability for scientists to use this awful event which killed people to better understand these natural processes to in the future hopefully help and save people and get better information out there like predicting these events and trying to evacuate areas before it happens. So this happened with 1906 with this massive earthquake was the scientists in the area of California started to study this data and the information given to them by this earthquake and elastic rebound theory was formed to explain how these work. Now this is stood, well this happened in 1906 08 by a gentleman called Reed and formulated how the energy moves, how the energy is transported and forms in an earthquake. And this has kind of stayed around even before Hess and the seafloor spreading and Matthews and Vine. So Reed was studying the displacement of the surface rocks and formulated that there had to have been some sort of previous strain or stress built up in the rocks to cause this sudden shift or displacement in the surface 
causing and releasing the earthquake. So we have this general diagram. I have a strike slip fault. I have a left side, left lateral movement here. Fault lines in red. And I'm looking from an aerial perspective. So the elastic rebound theory is the addition of stress and strain into a system, into a fault block system like this. And there's movement, relative, mo relative movement, which causes the stress and the strain and the deformation. And what you have is you have this side being pushed up like this. So you have, after a certain time period, you have this deformation that could be visible in the surface crustal rocks, whereby you have this slow creep or displacement and deformation or deformation right here and caused by the stress and the strain. And this area right here around the fault line will be under immense pressure and immense stress because of the relative motion. And eventually this will happen. The side that's moving is gonna jump forward or jump in the direction of movement and it's going to displace a certain area of ground and it's going to release the earthquake waves, the seismic waves, the energy built up. So let's say this is my, my epicenter right here because the epicenter is the point above the focus on the surface and it's going to release all the seismic energy and elastic energy built up in these seismic waves. They're gonna propagate out in all directions, the P, the S, the L, and the R, and this is caused by this kind of elastic rebound of the ground and how it's going to realign itself and reorganize itself so it's going to move and displace and cause small vibrations. That could be the foreshock. The main event or the main earthquake would be the release of the energy caused by the displacement and the jump forward. And then possible aftershocks in the exact area or an area close to it along the fault line would be the re reorganization of the, the planar surfaces and the crustal rocks after the displacements happened, whereby, let's say you just you bend a ruler, it's gonna initially, you let go of the ruler, it's initially gonna bounce and shake, and then it's gonna eventually shake itself and dissipate the energy to come back to a still or non-moving position. So this is the same kind of idea as the elastic rebound theory. It's how the ground's gonna move and distort under the stress and strain, snap, and the energy is released through displacement, and the vibrations and movement and reorganization of the crust of rock causes this earthquake and this series of earthquakes through a foreshock, main earthquake, and aftershock. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.